Falcon Rate Told Podcast is brought to you in part by the fine folks at Marshall Radio Telemetry, the makers of the most carefully engineered and reliable tracking system available. This episode, let's just jump right in. Here we go. Three, two, and one. And thank you all so much again for joining us for another special edition episode of the Falcon Retold podcast, a uh, special coronavirus edition of the podcast, which I really hope that uh, everyone listening hasn't really been um, overly affected by it. But I think uh, that's probably impossible at this point for the majority of the world to have not been affected by it at some point some way or another, whether it be uh, temporary job loss, um, direct illness, whatever the case may be. But uh, anyway, I've got um, a guest with me this week who is also another audio engineer and uh, a falconer as well, and someone who I trust that can get me a, a good audio file after this is all said and done. We're actually doing this the remote way, and it'll be the first episode, I think, of the podcast that uh, that we've done this way. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to give it a shot and just kind of see how it goes. So I've got Jason Houseman with me today and, uh, yeah, we're just going to give this a shot and, uh, you know, how's it going, man? It's going well. How are you doing, Jonathan? Well, yeah, doing all right, man. We're, uh, we're just another day at a time, you know, day yeah. at a time. And, <laughs> you know, I know when we talked last, uh, you said that, uh, and I'll just go ahead and get this disclaimer out of the way. I promise we're not going to spend this whole episode talking about the virus and the impact of everything and whatever we're. But I, I, I have to, to know how my friends are doing and stuff. So, I mean, when we talked briefly the other day, you said that things were kind of getting a little weird around where you're at, right? Like, you know, you had some uh, some weird stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. It's just, um, obviously, business has in, been impacted. Obviously, I mean, I'm in a fairly large metropolitan area about uh, the city's pushing a million, but outlying areas, which are basically part of the city truly uh we're talking about three million people so uh, i'm starting to see a lot of crazy stuff going on including uh someone in my neighborhood was uh confronted by someone with a knife and we had helicopters and cars and dogs and the whole bit in the neighborhood and i ended up seeing the guy in my front yard and called the police and they swooped in and and snagged him so it was kind of just hearing a lot of that kind of stuff going on it's pretty yeah, crazy it's, uh, break-ins are starting to happen you know all that kind of stuff that's crazy man yeah uh, it's uh i you know sadly i think we're just going to keep seeing more and more of that you know the longer they have everything um locked down and even though i really i i honestly hate using the, the term lockdown what we're on right now isn't really uh, an actual lockdown it's you know it's a strong encouragement i guess to stay home but yeah uh, until they start rolling in the humvees and the tanks and and mandating that everybody stay in their house with military personnel i i don't know if we can really consider this a true lockdown but regardless it's still getting a little scarier and it makes uh, it real difficult for yeah. people to to get by when they're living paycheck to paycheck i mean it's one of those things and, and a lot of america is and yeah you know it's one of those situations where you push that for so long and i mean if if i if my family's hungry i'm going to do whatever i need to do to get food now in my my perspective i would go out to the mountains and <laughs> pitch, a, <laughs> pitch a tent and we would yeah. have food you know but yeah. for most people it's go rob the the convenience store at gun right. kind of stuff so kind of scary yeah it's it's unfortunate it really is i i really would have never thought that uh things would have kind of gotten this far uh but i i don't know i guess time will tell whether or not you know it was all uh you know 100 percent justified in the end or if we uh could have taken a little bit more um you know localized approach to everything or or whatever the case may be um but i don't know man i'm i mean if nothing else uh you know, I'm glad that so far things have uh, have been manageable for you, at least. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's been you know. good. I mean, I'm surprised, honestly surprised at how well it has gone. Um, it's, uh, I think it's a testament to, I guess I have kind of a, a dark view on society, and I'm kind of, I'm <laughs> kind of in shock that uh, everybody has been so cool overall, you know, for the most part, it's been, it's been really good considering how many people are here. So, yeah. 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 I think so. I mean, like I said, I, I keep fingers crossed that, um, that things even out and kind of normalize after a while, but, uh, 
you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's impacted me even as a, as a respiratory therapist. I mean, I, I didn't get to work at all this week. I mean, I, I got out of the clinical environment a couple of years ago and went from working with uh, sick, premature babies to, to doing sleep medicine. Cause I needed a change in my life. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, as much as it improves people's quality of life, you know, with, uh, you know, CPAP therapy and sleep apnea and everything, um, unfortunately it's, uh, kind of considered a, a non-essential thing right now. Right. And, yeah. uh, there's, Nobody's you know, pay- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, people are, people are canceling, uh, studies left and right. And, um, uh, you know, unfortunately they're just, a, a lot of our, uh, a lot of our testing is, is really, really kind of dwindled. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm about ready to be sucked back into the, uh, the clinical environment again to make ends meet for the time being. And we had a, a meeting yesterday and, and we went from, um, you know, well, maybe we can, you know, have you guys temporarily absorbed into the respiratory department at the main hospital to, to make ends meet. And, and maybe, uh, you know, we can get you some hours to, well, you know, our respiratory department actually is on such low numbers right now. And, and the patient census is so low that I don't think we can get you any hours to, well, now the overall administration is mandated that, um, you know, we're going to make sure everybody gets hours, you know, if they go into like a, what they call like the staff float pool and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's really is been a, like almost a day to day kind of thing. And, um, you know, I hope it, it works out and, you know, I mean, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be training to go back into the clinical environment again. And, you know, no, nobody wants it. Nobody likes doing, you know, something different than what they want to do or what they're used to, but Hey man, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You get a paycheck. Get it you know? done, man. Get it done. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, uh, so kind of touching real quick on, uh, on how things are, are going otherwise. And with you, I mean, uh, have you been doing any cool, uh, you know, music projects lately then, um, you know, I could kind of go into a little bit about how, how business has been for you and, and what kind of, uh, you know, audio stuff you've been into lately real quick. Yeah. I, I guess to, to discuss my last couple of years, man, it's been, it's just been gangbusters. I've been, had the two best, best years, I think back to back of, my uh, career on the composing and uh you know jingle side of things i've done national campaigns for ge for their new line of light bulbs uh did that with a fantastic female artist named emily sage Uh, i uh, did another national campaign for v-lux skylights for another company called floor and decor um one tons of really cool awards and uh, I did a been producing some hip hop and r and B. I I did a song with uh, a guy that had a had, had a tune that he wanted me to do all the music for uh, that featured Snoop Dogg um, that's led to that, other projects yeah just and all that, kinds that's of stuff. the and real quick that's the song that uh, that we heard in the that that we heard in the intro right oh, yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to yeah, hear in the intro it. that's okay. right yeah yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, you won an Emmy also too, didn't you? I won an Emmy in 2004, uh, the first, or 2005 range at when I first started my company. And then I won another one, uh, I don't remember, 2012 or something like that, 2014, somewhere in there. Yeah. I've won a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just kind of really nonchalantly. It's like, yeah, I, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that quarterback's just like, yeah, I mean, I, I want a Super Bowl ring like back in, I think it was like, <laughs> well, I think it was like back in like 2006. I, hell, I don't remember. I don't even remember who we were playing. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I, mean, I, I was honestly of... <laughs> have some other, I have some other awards that I'm, I'm more proud of. It's, it's, um, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's not a, an accomplishment, but, um, it's, those things are kind of a racket, and I hate to hate to say that out loud, but it's uh, you know you have to pay for your statues and you have to pay for your stuff, and, you know. And, and yeah. I, I I got a buddy that won three three Grammys in one year, and he couldn't afford the Grammys. Yeah. He doesn't have them, you know. It's so crazy. it's kind of a it's kind of a you, you pay to submit, you pay to you know what I mean. There's all this kind of stuff, so it's um, yeah, it is what it is. It's I I never talked about it until my. My uh, manager, she just kept yelling at me. Why aren't you putting this on everything? You, you, and I, I put it on my signature at one point, and I posted, put it on my Instagram. And as you know, I 
if I started liking some product or something, some company, you know, I'm not going to mention any companies, but I started getting endorsement deals like immediately yeah. upon putting that on my Instagram. And I was like, okay, maybe she's right. Maybe I need to, do need to be talking about this, but it's a it, strange it, it, world. Yeah, it definitely matters to, uh, to those type of people in the business for sure. And, um, you know, for the general, like overall people that are, that are sleeking or that are sleeking, um, um, you know, someone reputable. I mean, it, it yeah. matters to the general to general clientele for it sure. Does. It I does. Think. Yeah, and it's um, it, it's a it's a, in my signature now on my emails, and I notice that I get if I email somebody, I get a response a lot faster than I used to. <laughs> so, right. so I kind of yeah. yeah it's, there's definitely some leverage there. But other than that, man, it's, I've got some other awards that mean a lot more that uh, were more personal and that I was, you know, just uh, I was put up for um, that were more about what I've done for the community and things like that. Those are the ones that matter to me. Now, as far as, um, you know, as far as the falconry stuff goes, um, which, yay, people are probably like, yay, they're finally starting to talk about birds. Woo. You know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, anyway, like what, uh, how was your last, uh, how was your last season? And, and um, you know, I mean, what, uh, what kind of you kind of stuff you've been up to lately with all that? Uh, man, it's, uh, my last couple seasons have been weird because I took on a second job, um, and uh, I'm a part-time GM of another recording studio in the same building with me, and I really enjoy that, and it's been great, but it has definitely, it used to be that I could leave at three in the morning, three in the afternoon and go hawking, and then go home, eat you know, dinner with the family, head out, back to the studio, and work for a few hours, and I, I don't have that kind of schedule anymore so my seven day a week uh, squirrel hawking life has dwindled down to you know two or three days a week kind of thing and then as many I'll, t- I'll take time if I can bust out for a couple days and leave on a leave on a Wednesday night and go out to somebody's place you know out east or something like that and hawk because uh, I also fly long wings so I'm I've got a tundra peregrine so I do quite a bit of weekend stuff. Um, so I feel like I'm a little bit of a weekend warrior right now, uh, and I'm not liking it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> something's eventually going to have to give, um, and I don't think it'll be the falconry. <laughs> but yeah. it's hard to, hard to turn down the money, you know. That's that's what it comes down to. And got a kid in college in Montana at Montana State University, and out of state tuition is not cheap. So no, I'll it keep, is not. Yeah, yeah, no. But my long game is to move out west, and my wife and I are looking around out in out in Montana and. And Wyoming and Idaho, so uh, I'm hoping that'll happen in the next couple of years here and get things back up. But yeah, I'm squirrel hawking with my 1500 plus gram female red tail. I've been flying for five years, and uh, and I've got this Tundra Peregrine, who's honestly the worst falcon I've ever flown, attitude wise. She's just uh, I, <laughs> she, I named her Salt early on, and she just gets saltier and saltier every day. So we'll see. <laughs> no, I got you, man. Yeah, I mean, I've this this past year was my was my first kind of four way four gosh four way <laughs> four four my this past year is my first uh, foray so to speak into um, uh, the bigger long wings, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I had that prairie that I pulled um, you know from Utah. Yep. Uh, back in June, and then had it for about four months, and it decided to die from a from a sepsis, and and uh, yeah, I had uh, I guess just had bacteria that uh, kind of took it over. It was uh, from a duck that I that I bagged it on, um, Damn. you know, x amount of days prior, and uh, yeah, I just woke up one one morning, went in the went in the other room, and it was just kind of laying there dead, you know. So it's uh, <sighs> you know, so I mean, it's 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 a bummer whenever you are are trying to to learn and, and make progress and i it, the irony was i mean i droned it to like 800 feet the day mm-hmm. before and everything was was fine he acted normal didn't show any symptoms whatsoever and then you know there was that and then woke up to that the next morning and and so then i i got that uh that other hybrid that i was um um trying to fly um you know and and just transferred recently um, it was, uh, that tribred and, you know, it's, like I said, it was, um, it was definitely, uh, an interesting year. You know, I was training, you know, a bird from like 
June till just about like a week ago. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, right now I don't have any birds and, uh, I'm actually pretty happy about it. <laughs> I'm really, really kind of glad for the break. But yeah, uh, you, yeah it's, it's, it's hard to go through stuff like that and not need yeah. a little bit of a break. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, Falcons definitely have a, a, a very unique personality though, I think. And I love them. Know, yeah, I, yeah. I can't, I can't stay away from them. I've flown, um, you know, everything from Oplomatos to, to cheers, to hybrids, to par- several peregrines. I, I just, I love them. Absolutely love them. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, there's just something about a Falcon's personality that even, even though they're, uh, you know, like the, I know that, that hybrid that I had, um, he really didn't like you at all unless you had food. And, you know, it was, it was, it was very kind of a, a parent, you know, he'd see you and then he'd try and bait away from you and stuff. And then like, as soon as he knew that you were getting ready to fly or, um, or, uh, you know, getting ready to give him some food or whatever, then he was, you know, super sweet. Right. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but otherwise he just did not, did not really care to be around anybody. Yeah. Um, and, but I mean, uh, overall, like, especially the, the smaller Falcons too, you know, Kestrels in particular, I've, I've always been a huge fan of their personality and, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy long wings as well. Um, you know, not so much the, the exhibitors and, and, um, and stuff. I mean, the, the exhibitors are the, the one species so far, I think that we've, and you know, we've had this discussion before, but I just, they just don't mesh well with me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I love watching them fly. I love, I love to see, a, a goshawk flown by a guy who knows how a guy or a girl who knows how to fly a goshawk. And it's, sure. it's absolutely phenomenal. And then I get that itch and want to scratch it. And then I, I go, no, 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 no. And I've, I've, <laughs> I've imprinted, um, I don't like to do imprints either. Um, I don't know that it's. I just don't like. I don't like noisy birds, and uh, and the goshawks are just wired in a way that they're just so amped up that I I get amped up and agitated around them. So it's I don't. That's not what my falconry is about. You know, right, my right. falconry is more on the zen side, and so I, I like birds that like to close their eyes and put their heads in the hood, and and when they're on the glove, they're on the glove. You know, and. Uh, and I just uh, maybe I'm just a shit guy with goshawks, and that's probably the problem. <laughs> but but uh, but I've you know I've given I've given away. Uh, I actually the one goshawk I did imprint was a Siberian, and uh, I uh, I sold it, and the guy you know had called me three or four times afterwards and said this thing is just a absolute pleasure to fly and is a monster. So it's um, you know, and I've and my my son youngest son. Did a hard chambered female uh, finish, and uh, he came to the same conclusion. You know, Bird was awesome. I mean, Bird would lean in and snuggle his face. I mean, it was just incredible. He did a great job with this bird, um, and uh, decided he didn't like him. And we got him to another guy um, up north, and he called me and said, "Man, I'm smashing everything that moves with this bird. It's awesome." So. Um, I just think they're better off. Plus, I live in the South. It's kind of stupid, you know, to be honest with you. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Asper City down here. Yeah. So, well, yeah. and, you know, even even around here, um, you know, a few of my buddies here, and, I mean, and you know some of them, too. I mean, yeah, but, I'm uh, an Indiana boy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, but the, there's been plenty of guys around here that have successfully kept and, and flown gosses over multiple seasons and intermute them okay and, and um didn't really have many issues and you know i really think that um you know the the interim like middle of the week uh weight management part of things just from what i've observed from other people that have uh, had a lot more experience doing it um really goes a long way uh, yeah. to to keeping the uh the aspirate bay so to speak um but overall it's just uh I and I know we've mentioned this before, um, you and I, or we talked about it, but uh, since day one, like since like literally the first day that I started shadowing um, and going out with people in the field, I mean they've had goshawks. I mean multiple goshawks, and so my exposure to them has just been almost oversaturated from right. day one. And yeah. so I'm a little decent. I'm well, I, sh- I should say I'm a lot desensitized to goshawks and, you know, I mean, they're, they're fun to watch fly when everything goes right. But even the guys that are, that swear by them and are the hardcore guys or whatever, they, 
even they are just like you know <laughs> there, there's plenty of days <laughs> yeah. there's, there's plenty of days where i you know like it's it's just it's a real test in patience for sure but yeah. uh and i'm you know I'm, I'm living in squirrel country i don't we don't have access to rabbits like you do in indiana and mm-hmm. so uh for me i wanted a squirrel hawk with a goshawk especially a big female finish and i had an opportunity to get the siberian male um just because of some relationships i have and so and it was you know, I said no at first because it was an imprint. I would have to imprint it, and I didn't really want to do that, um, but ended up taking it. And it was a cool experience. But uh, for me, I, I realized with the gosses is that they, they like to chase what they can see, yeah, and they don't think much beyond that. Um, I mm-hmm. think there are guys that probably can get them to do that. I just can't. And so when, they, when a squirrel hides behind the tree, the goshawk gets bored and flies off. Yeah. And I uh, couldn't get them to do what a— red tail hawk just does naturally and mm-hmm. uh, so that's that's where i am with them but man they're so fun to watch yeah so, for sure yeah. yeah well i mean what uh what uh, didn't you say also that you had a a deposit down on a on another bird also? yeah on a red nape yep yeah. i've got a red nape uh coming uh hopefully depending on how things go with being able to fly it here and all that stuff this summer but uh yeah the plan is um to fly that uh, it's my main bird this coming year, and then of course I'll hopefully still have the red tail in the in the yard and uh, go squirrel hawking because yeah. I can't I can't stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you're definitely pushing the uh, the boundaries of uh, of you know the the continual intermewing of red tail. That's for sure. You know with the yeah, she and has, everything else. She so. has gotten uh, my last one I kept for five years as well. She was a really big female as well and uh i'm was blessed to get this one um she last year showed some signs t- in february that she was definitely maturing and then this year she just kind of went wacko in january and did some really really dumb stuff with me and i made me look, <laughs> made me look like i didn't know what i was doing which is always fun um yeah but uh i'm probably gonna try to keep her i don't know i don't know if it's um it may just be one of those things where I just put her up at the beginning of January every year. I just she's just such a good good hawk, um, completely docile, non aggressive on me. You know, just have never had any kind of. She literally, I could pick her up when she's at full molt weight. I mean, I'm talking like 60 ounces. Um, I can go out there and put my hand down. She steps up. I unhook her. I put the hood up in front of her face. She closes her eyes, seats her head in the hood herself, and you know, shakes her head into the hood. Uh, I just, it's hard to turn a bird like that loose, especially when she can go out and smash a squirrel like in nothing I've ever seen. So, yeah, um, we'll see how long I can, I can deal with it. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> well, it, it may be 25 hours or it may be 25 years. We'll see. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> regardless, eventually it'll be on to the next one way or the other. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. That's the thing is I've, I've certainly, um, I trap a lot. I help people trap, uh, red tails in North Carolina quite a bit, um, I've got some great spots, and I can I can easily go out and get another one if I need to. So, gotcha. Yeah. Well, what other what other stuff have you kind of been involved with with the uh, with the state? I mean, you were uh, you were kind of involved with your state club for a while there. When yeah, with the North anyway. Carolina North Carolina yeah. Falconers Guild, I uh, I was a VP um, for for a year, and uh, American Falconry Conservancy. I helped get that new logo of theirs put together, and I was uh, board uh, Eastern director for two terms. And then I uh, started, helped start uh, a new club in North Carolina called the Carolina Hawking Club, and mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a board board member on that club as well. So and you know I work with help work with the state. I helped uh, Bob Pendergrass here in North Carolina. He and I uh, did a lot of the work to get the Peregrine Take here and that sort of stuff. So and I work with the Carolina Raptor Center work with um, off and on, work with the Eagles and sort of that sort of thing with them, which I just got permitted for an Eagle. So yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah. So what are your, uh, what are your plans with that? I know that you, you mentioned um, with me in a previous conversation that, uh, that, you know, there was a little bit of miscommunication with your, uh, with your, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, with your CEO and stuff. And 
And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been working for ten years, you know, with eagles uh, off and on to just try to get experience. I've flown, you know, obviously big red tails and things like that. So I've I've been working towards getting that permit, and of course things have changed a little bit on the process of how you do it. So I hit up my fish and wildlife here in in uh, North Carolina, and uh, they, we have we have a great person that works with the falconry community here, and she's uh, incredible. And I just hit her up and said, "Hey, I want to go ahead and." do this and uh what what are how do we go about it now and she said oh well um just uh let me uh make some phone calls and she uh called bob pendergrass the president of north carolina falconers guild and then she hit me back she said you're good i was like okay (laughs) so um and i told her that i was when i when i did initially talk to her i said i want to i'm thinking about going for take um this year and that's why I want to do this now. And so she did that, and I've got it and all that. And then uh, 15 minutes later, I get notified that I've, been, I've applied for take. And uh, I was still in the thinking process of applying for take. So I, I kind of got <laughs> dumped in my lap. So I went to my wife and talked to her about it and said, listen, I, don't, I think I'm just going to call her up and tell her, ask, see if she can remove me from take this year because I don't know if I'm ready to do that. And my wife looked at me and said, how old are you? And I said, I'm in my 50s, early 50s. And she said, how long can you do this? And I said, I have no idea. And she said, why don't you just go for it? Um, Which is a big, big thing because if I get an eagle, I'm going to probably commit to 10 to 14 days a month in like Kansas and those areas um, through the season to to fly that bird properly. Um, So that would be a, a big thing. I didn't get take, so I'm I'm back on the back burner. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, yeah, it's definitely something that, uh, yeah, it's probably best not rush into anyway. So you know. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was funny yeah. how how I thought. Well, no big deal. I probably won't get it anyway. And then when I didn't get it, I was like really upset. <laughs> you know, I was yeah. Like, damn it. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> really you wanted it. I've yeah, wanted it for a long time, and it's one of those things. I mean, I I I get to fly my dream bird, which is a a peregrine falcon, um, you know, we have access to those wild and captive. Um, the golden eagle was the other one, and, uh, you know, someday I'll fly one. And, and it's honestly the the best situation for me would be that I do move out west in, in two years or something here, and, uh, and that's when I get my permit. That would be sure. the ideal situation, and that's really what I'm hoping for. Sure. Well, you know, I, you, you kind of train yourself and – get yourself like in this certain mindset once certain circumstances happen and everything then even even if you know and deep down that it's not the best time to do something you you you've kind of talked yourself into it by that point and sometimes yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely a little uh yeah it, it can be a little hard to uh not be disappointed after the fact even though you had to remind yourself that originally you were like what a, this would be this is not good. Like <laughs> this, this is, is gonna not going to really work out. hard to pull off. <laughs> but I'm notorious for that kind of stuff. I mean, I yeah. I, I drive during the season when I'm when I've got a falcon, I drive uh, to Eastern North Carolina every weekend um, and spend the weekend with friends and hunt. Uh, you know, fly on dove and snipe and duck out there, and then I take multiple trips. I went to Texas this year. Um, Alabama. I usually go to Indiana at least once. I go to North Dakota quite a bit. So I'm, yeah. I, I, I like to make those trips and spend 10 days out in nowhere. And not that Indiana is nowhere, but North Dakota kind of is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, well, I, I would say that Indiana is more somewhere. It is it's just, somewhere. It's just, just, just somewhere. <laughs> it's it's a place. I was born and but, raised uh, there, and uh, I definitely still consider it home. I love it there. Yeah. So. Well, this would be the good segue to go ahead and talk about you know your your youth then and what you got you what got you into all this and uh, you know the people that you kind of grew up around in Indiana that uh, kind of helped get you into it. So. Yeah. Well, I uh, I was always into animals. And so I kind of grew up, uh, with even at four or five years of age, I had snakes and the whole bit. So I've, um, I think a lot of falconry people are also somewhat hurt, hurt people. And, uh, back in the day in the back of some magazines, you could actually order hawks, you know, for 40 bucks and things like that. So I was always trying to convince my parents to let me do that and, uh, (laughs) never happened. But, uh, my mom, when I was 10, took me and introduced me to a guy um, that was a falconer. And um, 
I got to meet his red tail hawk and talk to him about it. And do you want me to go into all that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, might as well, man. I mean, you don't, you, 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 I'll let you be as descriptive as you want. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, everybody's got an interesting story. You yeah. Know, so, so, well, so, well, so you can you can jump back here and uh, re-edit and um, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I, she she took me out to this far, old farmhouse and uh, it was one of those three story. Um, big white houses and uh, with the dormer windows and all that stuff and uh, several motorcycles sitting out front. We go inside. It's the 70s. There's black lights. There's beads everywhere. It's, you know, the whole the whole deal. Um, I was smelling some kind of strange smell and later figured out that was marijuana. Um, <laughs> Mom was an artist, um, is an artist, and um, she told me to go upstairs and meet this guy. And I said, no, cause I was 10 years old and I was going to you know, terrified to even go up and even think about that. She goes, Jason, he has a hawk. And of course I was up there as fast as I could get up there. <laughs> and I was standing there. I see sitting on his, on his bed, cross-legged, you know, hippie style dude, um, seventies all the way. Um, and he, I said, you know, do you have a hawk? He said, yeah, who are you? And I told him and said, oh, you're Diana's son. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, well, if you're any closer, uh, it might bite you. And I look around and just to my right and tucked away in this dormer window alcove uh, is this red-tailed hawk sitting up on a tall perch and a foot <laughs> with a foot up. And, yeah, so it was, it was him talking to me about – the process and how you do it and all this stuff, but then uh, more so uh, that I was 10 years old and I couldn't do it and that I was, this is 1977, and uh, that I needed to wait and that when I got out of high school, if I wasn't doing anything but working or something, I could take it on. If I was going to go to college, I might want to wait. And the way my life went, I ended up falling in love with music and realizing I really wanted to be a musician instead of a biologist or zoologist, which is what originally I thought I would do. And uh, went to music school, and then from there I started touring and all that. So when I started my company, um, to 2000, end of 2004, uh, the top of the list was to make money and be successful. And the second thing was to pursue this falconry thing I'd been wanting to do my whole life. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, fortunately, there's the thing called Google, and I did that and found out that there was a workshop in North Carolina just two weeks from when I did that search and I signed up for it and met some really cool people and the rest is history man I've just uh, been doing it ever since yeah yeah well that's awesome man I mean it's uh like I said everybody's got got their own little uh you know strange quirky stories that you know there's there's always that one story that everybody remembers that gets into this as far as uh you know kind of that that sparked that initial interest so yeah but uh but yeah, so, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the, the music career and, and all that stuff, um, you know, like it, what, I, how long of a gap was it then whenever you initially got interested? I mean, when you were a kid and when you could finally do it about how many years? Again, was oh that? God, man. I mean, I was 10 years old and then I didn't start and that was in 77 and I didn't start until 2005. Yeah. So, you know, I, I read books. I, yeah, I read books. And, and as as the world started changing, I got more access to information. Um, you know, in 77, it was really tough. My side of the mountain, you know, but, uh, you know, being able to find a, a book like uh, Observations of Modern Falconry, things like that, Stevens, you know, stuff, the, the good ones um, that honestly, when I read them, read them early on were worthless to me because... They were kind of tailored to people who were already falconers. Uh, I can't say they were worthless. They just, uh, I've read them since, and it's funny how I'm reading the same text and it means something completely different to me. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's really cool. So it's been a, it's been a fun process and I've, I, uh, I can't say enough about the sports, man. It's just, it's the people, um, it's the relationship with the animals. It's the relationship with my youngest son as he grew up into, into falconry, was in the woods with me since he was three years old. And you know, it was just a, I mean, he's an absolute natural. And uh, and then to have my younger brother, Eric Hausman, uh, be a falconer as well, it's just, it's kind of become a family thing, which is kind of neat too. You know? Yeah, no, that is cool. And both yeah. of those guys were my apprentices, which is kind of cool as well. 
<laughs> yeah, I uh, every so often my kid will show a mild interest, but I don't have any delusions at all that he's going to end up getting into it. And and uh, it's funny though because uh, I'll be messing with a bird for the first time, and then you know I'll, I'll he'll just kind of randomly come out every so often and just kind of see what I'm doing or whatever, and or let me know that he's getting ready to do something or whatever the case may be, and. Uh, you know, he'll just kind of nonchalantly sometimes, you know, just kind of look at me and, and just kind of be like, ah, oh, bird's acting a little fat there, dad, and just, just turn around and walk off and, and stuff. And, <laughs> and uh, it just cracks me up because, like, you know, it, even even the ones, even the kids that grow up around it, it seems that still don't want to get into it themselves. There's always that little bit of, like, stuff that they retain, pick up. And, and uh, you know, the fact that he you know may or may not have been right is irrelevant <laughs> right yeah 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 uh, right. more I, likely I, right <laughs> yeah 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 and it's, that's, that's besides the point uh yeah well <laughs> but, that's uh, that's also a tough thing too because i'm you know i've got a kid that i i sponsored for four years um before he came became a general and started when he was 12 he's in the house with me he's my son and he's He's watched everything I've done. He's learned everything. I've he's been involved in the falconry with me since he was a tiny little kid. So for him, it was very easy to train. I mean, we tra- the bird we trapped for him was fifty three ounces, so what for over fourteen hundred grams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's and, and he's bird. twelve. He's a little. He's a little guy, and he just t- he he never even acted like it was an, a thing. It just didn't even phase him at all. He, he pulled it off the trap. He started manning it. He just did his whole thing, and um, and then to have him in the build, in the house with me, and I'm sitting there trying to figure out what's going on with some bird or something. And he just goes to me. And he goes, "Dad, it's such and such." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, shit." <laughs> <You know? laughs> <He> goes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's it's it's. But that's that's the cool part about it is is I I, I always shy away from the master falconer thing because I just feel like I'm a per- perpetual apprentice. You know, I'm just every single bird I get, I'm learning something over and over and over again. And for, I, I feel like I've forgotten more than I've learned. Sure. You know, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's a good thing too, because I mean, it's always nice to have the mindset that you're, you're learning something new and, and you never stop learning in it. Um, you know, that's, that's definitely for sure. I mean, there's uh, you know, I, I've had to kind of ring myself in a couple of times over the past few years because I'm definitely one of the guys that, you know, wants to keep learning and wants to learn how to fly, you know, every species and stuff. And, you know, looking back, even though I've only really been in it, you know, just a handful of years now, you know, I kind of think back to myself and think, you know, sometimes just be like, you know, it, it might have been better if you had taken the approach of just like sticking to to one or two species like you know your first few years and just really good mm-hmm. but but at the same time i'm just not the personality that you know i, I want to keep trying new stuff you yeah. know and yeah. and uh you know it's it's a big reason why you know i mean like i said it's just it's hard for me to not get bored you mm-hmm. know with a certain species also and and uh you know that's kind of like you know the the whole like you know, red tail. I mean, I, 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 the only red tail that I've actually flown was my very first bird. And I right. got like 32 rabbits with him. Like and it was, it was a Tearsel red tail. I think I, I trapped him at, uh, uh, I think he was 32 ounces, caught his first rabbit around 26. And by mm-hmm. the end of the season was hunting at 34, like two right. ounces, two ounces above his trap weight. Yep. And, um, you know, he was a great bird. And, uh, but then like, you know, after that, I, I got a Harris and then after that I got a Kestrel and then, you know, right. I mean, I, and, and the thing is, is like, I don't know, like ever since then, I just really haven't had much of an, ex- of a really just, I, 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 the whole red tail on, on cottontail thing doesn't really do much for me anymore. It do, right. doesn't do, right. do much for me at all anymore. And, uh, you know, like that's why, you know, I, I might go back to a red tail this season, but it's because. I've really kind of gotten to see more of the squirrel hawking deal and everything. And I, I really want to kind of experience that for the first time myself. Also, I, I just think that's a lot more fun and involved and entertaining 
than yeah, it's, it's, the whole it's in your face. Thing, so. Yeah, it's right, yeah. right. The action is right there, and it's um, and you're much more involved because you're running around, you're pulling on vines, you're doing, you know, you're. It's a very, especially if you get a dog involved. You know, yeah. it's you and the dog and this bird, and you're all working, and it's it's uh, and you see all the catches. You know, everything happens right above your head. It's right. And I, and the thing is, is like the big thing for everybody in North Carolina is, is we started taking trips. I started taking trips to my hometown in Terre Haute to hawk with Don Garvin and all those guys. And that's where I met my one of my best friends in the world, Doug Arnold, um, who's now in North Dakota. But, uh, you know, the, the people started going with me. My buddies from North Carolina started to go with me just to get access to rabbits like that that are out mm-hmm. in the open. And, uh, and uh, it's... It was it was exciting to hunt those rabbits, but going back to North Carolina and diving back into that squirrel hawking thing, I realized that I mean nothing against rabbit hawkers, but I just the there's something about squirrel hawking that is just there's it's a whole I I actually like you I put up I put up squirrel hawking and put up the red tail hawk thing for a couple of years and flew nothing but long wings um, early on in my falconry. And when I came back and got ended up with another red tail, I I swore I'd never have, go without one. Now it's just being able to it's you know long wings are a whole different thing. You know you, you wait until the afternoon, you let them you know put them out the bath pan, let them get some sunshine early afternoon. And it's this whole prep thing and and this this process of going out and and getting that game and and having those one or two flights and you're done kind of thing where Mm -hmm. I can get up in the morning and go hawk with my, go squirrel hawking in the morning. I can put the bird up, go back out in the afternoon, go squirrel hawking in the afternoon. You know, it's like, it's just uh, the slips for me are much closer as far as where I can, what I have access to game wise, um, especially living in a big city and, uh, I just I don't think I'd ever ever go without it, but I I definitely do prefer it to rabbit hawking. For sure, we we just don't have it here. Don Garvin from from uh, Nor- from Indiana came to North Carolina, and I met him, and he he went out hawking before I got there, and he said, "Man, there are no rabbits here. I see sign everywhere. I just can't get them." I said, "Dude, there's all yeah. these ma- see those massive fields of briars? Yeah, that's where they are. Go for yeah. it. <laughs> you know, yeah. have fun." <laughs> so yeah, you'd have to you'd have to have like a a whole a whole. Um, the entourage of a uh, dachshunds with you or something well, to even a, yeah a, a buddy of mine Aaron um in North Carolina has has been real successful with a dachshund um but he's you know the thing there I mean I watch it and he's basically just sitting back and letting the dachshund do the work and waiting for the rabbit to get caught and I that's I'm I really admire him for having a dog and doing all that and how many rabbits he's actually taking in North Carolina because it's unheard of my brother is the only one that that has come close to that and he's not using a dog he's just powers through those big briar fields you know, <laughs> as he's just a madman yeah so but but to, i'm still in that kind of weird thing the the, the whole red tail hawk thing for me and and even harris hawk thing is is the interaction in the trees with them with the with the squirrels so for me i just want to be i i just like squirrel hawking yeah so. Yeah. yeah, no, I got you. Well, and and you mentioned, uh, I mean, you have a dog yourself, don't you? Yeah, German short hair pointer. Um, yeah. Mainly use him with the falcon, but uh, and he, my current bird hates him. My current, uh, <laughs> my current red tail. My my falcon it doesn't care anything about him. She's fine with him, but uh, but yeah, my my red tail hates him, which has been an issue. And that's the, another reason. She's almost, I guess she's almost perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the other thing I've been thinking about is just cutting her loose and getting a bird that that. Uh, you know, I may have done something wrong. I've also thought about spending a whole summer with her um, as a last-ditch shot is just to feed her every day out in the yard with the dog right there every mm-hmm. day and see if I can get her to chill out. But it's, yeah. just, it's just weird, man. I mean, she can have her hood on, and he can go by, and she hears him go by, and she'll flare up. It's pretty <laughs> crazy. Yeah, wow. she'll, come, she'll come off a off kill on him. So, yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, it's no good. Yeah. That's just not. It's just not worth it at that point. Yeah, but he's he's fantastic, man. My 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 dog's awesome. He's great. Oh, that's cool, man. No, I, like I said I've got two Vigilas, and I I feel like I'm I've been kind of wasting them a couple years. I mean, I I feel bad about it at times. I just haven't really had you know many uh, birds the last couple years that I've that have really been that conducive. Um, and around around here, we don't really have much in the ways of quail or upland game around here close anymore. But I mean. Um, I'm going to try and make it a point to get out with them more. Um, 
especially if I end up with a red tail and stuff like that. It's like, I don't even, I don't even care if I, <laughs> you know, if they're not used to necessarily pointing anything, if they can help me, uh, send out some squirrels or something this fall or whatever, then man, then the first I'm, I'm hunting dog, bit. they can do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 He, he'll, he'll, he'll tree squirrels and he'll turn right around and point like you wouldn't believe, you know, it's yeah. just, um, yeah, they're great. No, that's cool, man. No, well, uh, is there anything else uh, at this point that uh, that you want to give any shout outs to or any um, or, uh, you know, like share any last sentiments with, uh, you know, with the community at large or anything before we uh, before we end this or I, I just uh, I hope everybody's safe and well, you know, that's the biggest thing. And uh, I've I will say that I'm really still in this sport because of the friendships I've made and uh, anybody out there listening that has met me knows that it's more about that to me than anything else. So I had a really good year on that side. You know, I didn't get to hawk as much as I normally do, but I got to go to go to the, the, the Eagle meet in Lubbock and hang out with Chase um, Dells and uh, saw Joe Cat there from Indiana, you know, got to hang yeah. out with a lot of people, Amanda yeah. Sweeney, you know, all these people. Um, and, uh, Jeff Fincher. Yeah, I'm sorry, wild man. The wild man. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so then, then I get it. Then I get an invite to go to the Alabama meet to hang out with Amanda and Jeff too. And that just, um, it's just, it, I've had a really good time this year. And uh, didn't get to hawk the five to seven days a week I, I usually like to, but uh, I got a new year coming up, so that's 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 my goal. Yeah, get back up, get back, get back up to that. So, yeah, well, that's yeah. awesome, man. Well, like I said, as in as far as uh, as far as the music stuff, um, I mean, as far as what you got on the dockets coming up or anything, I mean, barring uh, any other extenuating strange circumstances, uh, what else did you have kind of coming up? Uh, I've got I'm putting out an EP with a girl named Emily Sage, who I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple songs that we did for a film score. Uh, together that she wants to release independently and then another song that we've done together and then working with a guy named Young Citizen rapper uh, phenomenal artist uh, great musician and we've put a a band together called the Bodacious Wicked going to release some stuff with that and I have been talking to a place called the McCall Center here in town that's an old, old stone church that's been turned into an art complex, and I'm now going to be doing some teaching there and some help with some of the resident artists and may also do a residency with them as well. So, Cool. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff going on. Really excited. Awesome, man. Well, yeah. for uh, for anyone that might be interested in checking out your uh, your studio and you know some of your stuff or whatever, what's the website they can uh, they can reach you at? Uh, just jasonhausman.com is the easiest way to go. The company is called Hot Saki, and uh, yeah, the, the website's cool. And then of course I'm on Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff as well under my name. And um, my Instagram is americanfalconer.com. I mean. It's, uh, my, American Falconer, all one word, or my music one is Sonic Samurai and a Sonic underscore Samurai. So cool. That's how, how you can find me? Awesome, man. Well, thanks for uh, taking the time and, and helping me um, put out some content. I know uh, you know Israel had posted not too long ago that we're going to be kind of on a hiatus, just like everybody else. But uh, you know, like I said, being as uh, you're the one of the few uh, Falconers that I could trust to, to do this remote deal with and still give me a good quality audio file afterwards um you know we already established i didn't want you to do this because of your your falconry and stuff i you know we already yeah, established yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> it's, yeah. we, it's just just because yeah. i can get it done right 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 exactly <laughs> and, you know i mean we, i'm we a didn't... hack That's, yeah ex- <laughs> falconry well, wise i'm a hack and well, i don't know sure. if i push record when yeah. we started this so okay well i mean <laughs> we can always do it again you know for like you know three more times i guess or there whatever. you go let's do but, that uh, <laughs> it'll be just as fun that uh that fifth time as it was the first i'm sure yeah no doubt <laughs> but no doubt. anyway well thanks again man and um you know like i said we'll uh we'll hopefully do this again soon and hopefully we'll be in person next time so sounds good you know. i'd love to do uh, that that'd be fun cool man well thanks again and uh we'll talk to you soon all right, all right later brother all right be bye. safe buddy You too.